Welcome back to the garage here, and we are talking a little bit about something that every bass fisherman tries to avoid, and that is getting a backlash or picking out a backlash. We've all gotten them at some point in time. You know, you may be out on the water right now, and you've got a big monster backlash, and you're like, man, what do I do next? And that's where we are. So whether you're at home, whether you're you know out on the lake, whatever, and you've ever done this, and you've gotten a big nasty backlash, I'm gonna help you figure out just how to get that out. So that's, yeah, that's not the worst by any means, but it is bad enough. Here's the deal, when that happens right there, okay, the best thing you can do is stop. Take a deep breath, it's gonna be okay, all right? You're gonna be able to get this out if you follow these tips that I'm about to give you. Step number one, don't just start pulling on the line, holding your thumb on the spool, okay? That is very much step number one. The first thing you wanna do, which you actually should have already done this a little bit, to help avoid the backlash to begin with, is actually tighten up your spool tension knob right here. So you wanna put some extra tension on that spool. You actually wanna put a lot. I'm talking about tighten that thing down pretty tight, okay? Tighter than you would ever be able to cast it. Now I clicked the, I clicked the gear uh, or the handle back in gear, so I'm gonna push the button again. Nothing of that was on purpose, but you've got that spool tension knob, you've got it down really tight. Start giving it slow, steady pulls, okay? to start easing that line out. Now it's gonna ball up a little bit, and when it does, we're gonna deal with that here in a minute. But as long as you tighten that spool tension down to start with, it's gonna avoid a lot, like so much of that, where the line actually gets locked up underneath itself. Um, so much, so, I mean, if it doesn't do it at all, my other tip, I'm not even gonna be able to show you right here. But that's something that people have, that they just don't even think about when they get a backlash. Okay, and it did lock up here they don't tighten up that spool tension knob before they start pulling that line. They wanna put thumb pressure on it and start pulling. That just causes that line to bind back up even more so. But now we've hit a, we've hit a snag. We've hit a place where that line you know, has locked up under itself. This is where my other tip comes in. Okay, tighten your drag up a little bit. And this will make sense while you're doing that here in a second. Take your thumb, apply pressure with your thumb onto that spool especially wherever you see, so I can see that it's kind of over here, top left, about right in this area is about where, you know, that, that place is, is locked up. Okay, so let's pull tight. I don't want to pull on it too hard. don't want to weaken my, my floor carbon. So I'm going to apply quite a bit of thumb pressure right here. I'm going to click it in gear. And I'm going to turn it like two times is about what I'm going to pull it. Okay, I'm going to push the button. And again, slow, steady pulls. What you're doing when you do that is you're pushing that line back around the spool and you're kind of just taking that kink out of it. The, the line isn't necessarily underneath itself. It's just got overlaid to, to where it's in a place where it won't come loose, okay? Again, slow, steady spool, pulls and we're getting, we're almost there. And then that's a big thing is to make sure that you get it all the way out. If you've got that spool loose, you get to this point and you pull it, guess what, you're gonna get another loose loop. It's another big reason why you want to tighten up that spool tension. So look, that big nasty backlash, and as much worse as it got when we started pulling on it, it's all out. And then here's another deal, when you start reeling it back up, at some point in time, your line's gonna do that. So pull it up here, pull that line out. Don't let it, don't let it get into a knot, you know, before it goes back into the reel. That's what's gonna cause, it'll cause that fluorocarbon to kink and, uh, and cause a weak place in it, so just, Work those out as you reel it back in. A great way to do that if you are on the water, you pull that line out the end of the rod tip and it straightens all this mess out and you don't even have to worry about it. But if you've got it there in the boat like that, that's a great way to do it. So now, you know, I've got it pulled back up here. Loosen that spool tension back up. Loosen your drag back to where it was. You're right back in business. I hope this helps you, whether you're out on the water, practicing your casting, whatever you're doing next time, help you're gonna get backlashes. That's just the way it is. If you use a bait casting reel, at some point in time, you're gonna get a backlash. And fluorocarbon line, let's face it, is not cheap. You don't wanna to have to be cutting that out and respooling it every time you get a backlash. So be sure you do that. Those few tips will help you save a lot of money and a lot of frustration.